Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Jay Wall Sports. We are back here with another episode. Another. Hey, Pistons. Our receiver. Um, get my line. Get my line. What is up with you in this? When you bench your season veteran quarterback this late in the season, it's sending a message to the team. Dan goes out. And now they want to play with some heart, they want to play with some effort. I see why Don got fired. If you're not going to make the adjustments as a coach, you need to go up and get up out of here. Rent, Wentz has um, regrets. And it's a mental. I mean, disclaimer. He might have some outrageous, you know, Max Kellerman type, you know, things to say today. I don't know what he's going to say, but the way he's starting off this video it is, is giving me them vibes. What's up, J Wall Sports fans? Welcome back to another episode. What do you do? Yes. Be back. We are back. It's been a little minute. Me and Ashan, we are back in the lab, back to doing what we do. Man, yes, how you sir. doing? I'm good, bro. How are you? Man, I'm straight, man. So let's go to get things started off. First topic we have is Justin Fields. Should Justin Fields be the starting quarterback? In Justin Fields' first two preseason games, he won over the Bears fans as he threw for a total of 222 yards on 28 to 39 attempts. Fans are ready to see Fields be named a starter for week one, but head coach Matt Nagy has not budged on starting Andy Dalton. Not Sean. Do you agree with Coach Matt Nagy that Andy Dalton should be the starter, or do you think that Justin Fields should be the starter by week one? Um, I believe Fields should be the starter. He's, he's looked really good uh, so far in the preseason, but I think I said it before in a previous episode when we was doing the quarterback battles, that um, Andy Dalton is going to be the starter week one, and that's what it looks like. And I don't know why or what case, but I think he's going to be the starter for week one, and the offensive line looks really bad for Chicago. So I think that kind of plays in for Andy Dalton starting. You don't want your your future to, to get injured so quickly. And he took a, a really hard hit this last preseason game, yeah. and that can be – for 16 weeks. In week one, they play um, the Los Angeles um, Rams, and Aaron Donald's going to be ready. And I don't know if Justin Fields can last a full 17 weeks now since they added another week, taking those kind of hits and sustaining them and staying healthy throughout the season. So I think that kind of plays into why Andy Dalton is starting because you want to preserve, you know, your future. But Andy Dalton doesn't look good at all either. So I – I really don't know why he's holding on. Eventually, I believe Justin Fields will, will start, you know, like I said before in the previous episode, maybe like halfway through the season or, or wait about four or five weeks and go ahead and give it a change because I know it's not going to last long because Andy Dalton looked terrible that last preseason game. Yeah. Well, when he got popped, I don't, I don't think he was running with the starters. So I think that'll play a big deal into it. And they do play, they do play the Rams week one. So I, I see, I see that decision with him not starting week one, but personally I'd start him week one because you want to know what you have in your rookie quarterback. You have 17 weeks with the new, with them adding an extra game for all teams in the season, but you want to be able to see what you have with Justin Fields. And teams have done this before, and you want to put your rookie quarterback in to see like you want you want them to have the ups and downs of what an NFL rookie quarterback has to go through. You don't want to you don't want to put him in you know week six and then you know his downfall from week six to nine is like wow and then he doesn't really have those extra you know six seven eight games for his growth to really show as a rookie quarterback i think if they started him on week one you get 17 games to figure out what you have in justin fields and we they this has been done before I mean, look with the Cardinals and Josh Rosen. They started him in week four, evaluated him for 13 games, and they immediately knew that, that he was not it. And so then that's when they got um, Kyler Murray the following year. Um, Russell Wilson, he started 
And um, he started his season after the team was seven and nine the last the last season. He started on week one, and they got to see what Russell Wilson could do for a full entire season. And it turned out to be good because they had ample amount of film to realize that yes, Russell Wilson is going to work, or no, Josh Rosen is not going to work. So I, I see that 13, 14 games that he needs to that he needs to play for this for the um bears and like you said any dalton not looking that good like he we talked about it on the previous episode in the quarterback battles in episode 23 he he, did, he didn't look good at dallas he doesn't look good now in the preseason with the bears the team was eight and eight last season so why why are you like prolonging this go ahead put him in with the starters I mean, I understand that you got Andy Dalton, not Andy Dalton, uh, um, Aaron Donald coming up, but he's going to have to face Aaron Donald sometime. Might as well, might as well let him face the number one pass rusher in the NFL instead of having to face now he can adjust because he knows what number one pass rusher in the NFL is going to do. They might drop the first game in week one and that's okay because now he he's learning. So now when he has to go up against the Bucks defense, he's, he's a little bit better on reading things. He has a little, he has a little bit better, you know, getting a feel for when he needs to get rid of the ball. So go ahead and put him starting week one, let, let him, let him get popped once, you know, and once you once you get pop one, it's like on Saturday he got pop. He's gonna realize like I, I need that internal clock. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. And then that that's when he's gonna start looking like I need to get rid of this ball. Hey man, you know, I have to tag the bears in this one and, and let Coach Nagy see what we got going on. I hope that things will change. And and you know this is Matt Nagy's fourth year, so if he don't he don't get something going. Um, what we do at Whitson, the the um, K camp, snip snip. Uh, sit down, sit down. To a new organization, because you will not be with the Bears if you mess this up. I don't know if it might go pick them up, but that's another conversation for another episode. Right. Moving on uh, to our second topic. Should the Cowboys could be concerned about Dak? Cowboys say Dak Prescott injury is improving. He and he will be ready by week one. They may believe that there is more to that, that Prescott's injury. And the Cowboys letting us low. Well, Mark, should the Cowboys be concerned about Dak Prescott? Yes. They should be very concerned about Dak Prescott. Um the fact that we've we found out through hot knocks that the Cowboys have already lied to us once. Well, they didn't really lie to us, but they kept the second surgery that uh, Dak Prescott had to get on his ankle away from us. Um, perceived that this injury was more than what we thought it was from the beginning. Not just not just his ankle injury, but now with the shoulder, because um, I feel like he's been overcompensating for that ankle because he doesn't 100 he doesn't 100% believe in his own ankle yet. And that's common with the injury. You know, we even talked about, they even talked about um, Joe Burrow, how he's like very tentative around when, when anybody is around his knee. And the same thing happened with Tom Brady when he went down in the 2008 season, the following season in practice. He, they say he would visibly be yelling at, defensive players that that got too close to him because he was scared of that injury so it wouldn't be surprised to me that if that Prescott was scared to re-injure that ankle again and he hasn't been playing in any preseason games so we're expecting him to go out in week one no preseason games no live practice games with other teams you and he has to get hit for the first time, has somebody fall around him for the first time. He's he's not going to – it's not going to be good. And then with the shoulder injury, I just – I don't even know what to think of it at this point because they it's, – it's not an injury that NFL quarterbacks are used to seeing. They had to outsource to the Texas Rangers uh, medical staff because it's more commonly seen in pitchers. So I – I don't know. And then that second MRI that he had to go get, you don't you don't really go get a second MRI. 
if you feel like you're completely healed or if you feel like the process towards your recovery is going in the right direction. So I think they should be um, extremely worried because uh, they got they got uh, Ben Anthony Danucci there as the backup. And the last time we seen him play, he was bad. I have to agree with you, man. I'll be I'll be really concerned right now. Like I said, uh, like like well, like you said, you know, if he's not one hundred percent comfortable, they're not having practice or game speed experience through practice and preparing for other teams. It's not gonna look good by week one. In week one, they go against the defending champs of Tom Brady, and they gave Patrick Mahomes hell in the Super Bowl. Let alone, I don't know how that is gonna hold up. If he, like you said, you talked about Brady's injury. I don't know how he's going to feel around all that pressure around him. And they have the weapons, but the weapons aren't going to look good without Dak. And Dak is the future of this team. And they made that very clear. And um, I, whew, they need to pick up somebody else. Because what, what was the backup? Dan Nucci is not going, not going to work. At least for right now, until Dak, you know, gets his legs back under him, and he feels a little bit more confident out there on the field. Because I don't believe he's gonna look anywhere near as ready or game ready week one is showing about there. Right. Yeah. Perfect practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. He ain't been to practice. He hasn't thrown the ball since July. I mean, well, he's been throwing the ball. That's how he got injured when in the shoulder area from overcompensating, you know, not using his legs when he's throwing. So he's been he's been throwing the football. He just ain't been throwing the football with no real game speed reps. Like, and what we've been seeing, like, it's all been, like, not, like, lazy practice throws, but, like, he's been – it looks like he's not – he's not going 100%. We can most definitely tell, like, he's not going 100%. And I even was listening to Undisputed, and Shannon Sharp was talking when he was at Elway during practice. Like, as they got closer to the, the first game of the season – everything that they did was gain speed just so he just so LA could get the practice of doing everything at gain speed he's not doing anything at gain speed right now from what we can see so if he's not from what we can see if he's not doing anything at gain speed I don't expect him to just cut the switch on and start going gain speed on week one that that's a defending not against, not against the defending champs exactly that's that's a recipe to get him re-injured especially if they bring in the pressure and he falls on that shoulder or, you know, he doesn't feel comfortable scrambling, he's going to take a lot of hits. Right. He might have to pull that Tom Brady move that he got now that just, hey, man, I see you about five yards away. I'm just going to drop. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead and tag me. And the thing with Brady is, um, you know, they said last season he played with a Tory MCL, so I know, I, I know why he was yelling at the offensive line last year because right. he didn't want to get hit. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, we gonna see, man. But if he if he do get injured, and I'm a I'm a knock on wood before you know I start this. But if he does, Cowboys are screwed because they just pay, they just paid him too. So that's mm. all Kaepernick <laughs> for sure. They, they, you know what? There you go. Call call Kaepernick for sure. Call Kaepernick. All right, but um, moving on, me and Naishan, we are going to have the preseason awards. We're going to tell you guys who we think will get the awards, and we'll come back at the end of the year, and you know, we'll review these, and we'll tell you guys how we did. So start things off. We got Offensive Rookie of the Year. I'm going to have to go with Zach Wilson. He has looked really good so far in this preseason. And Aaron Rodgers gave him a lot of praise after seeing him play this past week. And I, I just believe he's going to have a great year. You know, sleeper pick, the Jets are the Jets. So that, that says a lot about the organization. But um, he, I've seen him play um, these past two preseason games. He's looked really good. It's almost really strong. He's able to, to read coverages, scramble out the pocket, make accurate passes. So. I believe he'll have a great year, better than we are expecting from the Jets. Wow. Uh, 
That's that's a good pick because Zach Wilson he has been playing very well, but I just don't think Zach Wilson has the um the the what's the word I'm looking for? Jesus Christ, he doesn't have the the weapons around him to for him to like really be able to shine and perform. At least not better than who I got, and that's uh, Trevor Lawrence. You know, although Trevor Lawrence he's on a he has a new coach who's in his first year with uh, Trevor Lawrence in the NFL. But um, he has weapons to be successful. He has running back Travis Etienne. He has wide receivers Marvin Jones, DJ Clark, Carlos Hyde, Laquan Treadwell, some of those guys that they're they're veterans, you know, especially Carlos Hyde and Laquan Treadwell. They've been they've got, you know, multiple, multiple years in the league. And then he has weapons in protection, which is one of the um, things that they were really like looking to put around him because they didn't want to know another Jer Burrow you know, kind of incident where he's scrambling so much that, you know, he ends up accidentally, you know, tearing his ACL. So they've been putting, you know, a lot of protection around him. They've been a lot of veterans that want to come play with Trevor Lawrence because they see the potential that he has. So I think with all, you know, the young players that, you know, can go with the veteran players that are, are going to be around him, I think, you know, he's going to be able to shine a lot more than, you know, other rookies just because other rookie offensive players just because you know of the kind of player he is and you know the people he's going to have around him moving on next we have defensive rookie of the year so defensive rookie of the year man I'm going to go with Michael Parsons from Dallas Cowboys, man. He's a 6'3", 245 linebacker, but he when you see him move, he moves like he's like, like 225 pounds. Like, he does not move like a person who weighs 240 pounds. Um, his first couple of games, like, I realized that he's one of those gadget guys, and that's how the Dallas Cowboys are pretty much trying to use him uh, on the defense. And you can use him in a multitude of ways, and he's just a guy that you got to put in there and you got to let him make plays, and that's what he's going to do. Uh, for pro football, pro football focus, they graded him the highest in um, against the run game out of all rookie running backs. So I'm I'm gonna shoot with Michael Par- with Michael Parsons, man. And his upside is really well. I didn't like the I didn't like the pick that the Cowboys used for him, but it looks like he's gonna uh, pan out very well after seeing him in a couple of preseason games. I have to go with um, Patrick Sertan. I believe to have a great year. You have. Bradley Chubb and Von Miller being a pass rusher. Then you got um, Jonathan Simmons, at free safety. And I believe that pass rush will make things easier for him, make him easier to defend those those guys. Kind of reminds me of a little, little bias here, but, you know, like a Josh Homer kind of thing where the, all, the defense line was creating so much pressure. All you had to do was just do your job. And I believe that's all you have to do this year. And that the pieces around him on defense will make things easier. And he already had a a pretty good pick six, I think, preseason week one against the uh, Vikings. And um, I believe he'll have a great year, a little sneaky under undercover defensive rookie of the year. That's a that's a good pick. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Patrick Tan, he wasn't he was on one of my lists, but I just I, I couldn't pass up on taking Michael Par- Michael Parsons for a defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, it was between those two, to be honest with you. Right. But now into a little a little, a little bit more interesting. Offensive player of the year prediction. Justin Herbert. Mm. He had a great rookie season. He threw for 4,336 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. And I could have seen him have another great year. He got his, you know, his feet wet this first year, came in, played strong. And, you know, he had the team in the games. They didn't finish some of those games, and I believe they will finish some of those games. And he already put up great numbers with 31 touchdowns and 10 only 10 interceptions as a rookie Keenan Allen and the other weapons around him he's gonna have another great year should have been rookie of the year last year who got rookie of the year last year I was about to ask because I think he fin- I, I either thought he got rookie of the year but I know he finished second Justin Herbert yeah Justin Herbert oh okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. so that, that makes your case even better Justin Herbert 2020 NFL offensive rookie of the year I could I could see I could see him making that leap to make to uh, get offensive player of the year but I think this offensive player of the year is going to go to a running back, and that running back is going to be Dalvin Cook. 
I mean, Dalvin Cook, he's had back to back 1,000. <sighs> hey, this, this is not biased. It's not biased at all. Not, not biased at all. Last year, he had 1,500 rushing yards, right? In 14 games, he had 1,500. The man literally gets two, 300 yards, has two, 300 yard games almost every game. And then this O line for the Vikings has been the focal point for them. And they've been, they've upgraded it significantly, not to just help the running game, but to give the quarterback some more time to find, you know, his, his um, what's it called? His targets. Yeah, his targets and his receivers in Justin Jefferson and um, Adam Thielen. And then not only is he a good off, no, not good um, running back, but he's also good, you know, at running routes and catching stuff and catching those little check downs out of the um, out of the backfield and just taking it to get first downs. You know, I think, you know, if he plays all 17 games this year, I think he may get really close to that 2000 mark. And I think that's just going to put him over for offensive player of the year. Mm, I feel like that's some bias, but you said it wasn't. So we're going to keep it going. But that, that is a good pick, though. Uh, moving on, defensive player of the year. I'm going to go with Chase Young. He, he had a really good um, – rookie year and just the kind of like mentality that he had like he would as a rookie when in the first week they was going into the wild card and he was screaming I want time I want time we told him yo you don't want to poke the bear like that's not something you want to do but that's the kind of dog that you want to have you know in your your teammates and your players you want you want them to want to play the best players you know you he wants that competition I think he's going to learn from his mistakes last year you know and I think he's going to improve significantly and he's going to I think he's going to really shock you know the NFL next season about from his you know year one and year two improvements I'm not the, uh, you know I'm going to say on the D-line I'm going to say Brian Burns is, is a non-biased pick I believe this is his his true breakout year. Um, his first two seasons, I think he was just a sack or maybe second half behind Julius Peppers for the most sacks in the first two years. And we all know the resume of Julius Peppers and the career he had in Carolina. And Brian Burns, is, he's put on about 10 to 15 pounds to add some more muscle. And I think that will do him great this year. He's already has the moves. He has the speed enough to get around those um, those blockers. And I do believe he's going to turn some heads and surprise some people and put up some Aaron Donald best numbers this year. So, Brian Burns. Okay, that, that's tough. That's tough, man. So, last one, man. MVP. Who you got? Discount double MVP. Oh, back to back. Back to back. No questions asked. We see y'all next week. We out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nah, nah, nah. I got some questions. I got some questions. You back really back. going back to back? Back to back. Wow. Hey, that's 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 I don't I, I didn't want to pick him because I didn't think he was gonna go back to back. Hey. He he got a chip on his shoulder. I, I do believe he has a chip. I do believe he wants a, a championship. And he was a play playing half away from getting there last year. And I think that's going to be his motivation this year. Uh, last year, I don't even think he had a real motivation, you know, from the outside, from the media perspective, but coming in from the all season of not wanting to play anymore, contemplating retirement to coming back to wanting to win, to wanting to help Green Bay win, even though they had their differences and stuff. Motivation is going to be the key this year. And I mean, well, I, I think he was motivated last year because everybody was saying that, Oh, Aaron Rodgers is done. He don't got the, he don't got it no more. And then he came out and went MVP. Like that, that was motivation. They were saying you was washed. And now he's saying, I'm gonna go get me a ring. Okay. Hey man, I, I stayed quarterback, but um I went with Josh Allen. You know, he finished second in the MVP voting last season. Um and it looked like he 
really still has a lot of room to grow and improve because that jump from year two to year three, like it was, it was shocking. It was wowing. Like we expected it to come from Josh Allen, but like the way that he did it, he looked like he looked like he was maybe in year four, year five, the way he was playing. And he, now he has more targets than just Cole Beasley and Stefan Diggs. They signed Emmanuel Sanders over the off season. Um, I think that, you know, this year, this year, through the year four jump is going to be even bigger with more targets and, you know, a more understanding of how to read defenses for him. So uh, I got Josh Allen as my MVP. Um, breaking news I just saw. I don't know if you want to change your offensive rookie of the year. It looks like Travis Etienne will be out this season. He will have foot surgery. The entire season? It looks like it. Likely. Sheesh. Um, so hey man, you guys heard it first on J Wall Sport, Travis Etienne. He will be out for the entire season with a foot surgery. It's the right foot, correct? Um, yes. Wow. Last fracture in his foot. Fracture in his foot. Okay. Um you you still you still got I feel like you still have some okay pieces for the running back game. I mean I don't know. That's 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 a that's a blow. Yeah, it is. Um I I hmm, the running back that they had last year, he James Robinson, he he did rush he, for the he looked really good. Yeah, he, he looked, looked really good. good. He rushed for a thousand yards last year, averaged four point five with seven touchdowns, um, and he only fumbled the ball one time in fourteen games. So that, mm, yeah, I'm 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 gonna stick with that. I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna stick with that. Ever Meyer, I th- I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing. This boy upset like he the coach. Yeah, man, I was excited <laughs> to see Travis Etienne play, right? Especially I, I he got him him back up with his old teammate with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, like. That's that's sad to hear, but hey, you heard it first here on J Wall Sports. Travis Etienne will be out for the entire season with a right foot injury. He had a right foot fracture. So, now Sean, what are you what are your thoughts on that, man? How do you think that's going to affect the Jaguars? Uh, it's going to be a slight blow. You have you do have a veteran Carlos Hyde and um, James Robinson, so I do. But James Robinson not a veteran, but he's going to his second year. And like you say, he had a really good uh, rookie campaign. I do believe you can play both of those. You have like a power back and a species of elusive kind of back. And that can kind of open up the offense even more. Um, we just have to see. It is a blow. You know, as a quarterback, you like to have pieces around you that you're familiar with, especially playing a couple of years with him in college. So um, I do believe he'll. Hopefully, you know, everything works out. Surgery goes fine. And it's the NFL. Next man up, I guess. Yeah, man, I completely agree with you, man. Next man up mentality most definitely has to be used here, especially, you know, James Robinson is going into his second year. So he pretty – he especially him being on Jacksonville last year, I'm pretty sure, you know, he had to have that next man up mentality all year, you know, players going down, especially with COVID and everything. And Carlos Hyde, he's a veteran. So that next man up mentality is pretty much instilled into his brain. And it's true. I have confidence in Trevor Lawrence that, you know, if this was like, oh, week seven, week eight, and then he went down, I feel, I feel a little differently about it. But since it is week they haven't even gotten a week one. I feel like, you know, they have, uh, you know, a week and a week and a half, almost two weeks to adjust to, you know, not having Travis Etienne out there on a, on a field with them. Yeah. Tough blow for the Jags, but, you know, we'll see how they adjust. Yeah. But that's all we got for you guys today. We appreciate you guys for tuning in to another episode of J Wall Sports. Once again, my name is Lamar Wiley Jr., and I'm here with Nishan Anderson. If you guys haven't already, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and interact with us. Um, you can follow me and Nishan on our personal pages that will be in our bios on Instagram and Twitter. And we out. We out.